an ancient order lurking in the shadows, a supernatural MacGuffin, and loads of parkour-influenced stunts. What more could you want from a big summer blockbuster? When it was initially announced, Assassin's Creed sounded great. With star Michael Fassbender pulling together an A-list production, nothing could go wrong. You did well, Cal. And yet, the 2016 Assassin's Creed film failed. Despite the fact that the game had been released only four years prior in October of 2011, Sony Pictures signed a deal to partner up on the rights to the franchise from the newly formed Ubisoft Motion Pictures wing of the behemoth gaming company. In July of the next year, it was announced that Michael Fassbender, star of X-Men and the Alien prequels, would join the project as star and co-producer. And yet, the project would flounder for a few years. Initially, Fassbender's considerable heat seemed like enough to push the film project through. One thing was certain for everyone involved. The project they were working on was sure to be a franchise starter, if they could get it onto the screen. Today, there are 12 Assassin's Creed games. With Assassin's Creed Valhalla pulling in $1 billion alone, everyone knew that this project could be a cash cow. There was only one problem, the complexity of the games. This wasn't something like Mortal Kombat or Super Mario Bros. This game series might have started out life as an attempt at making a Prince of Persia spinoff, but it had developed into something much more. How could they respect everything that had come before, but still make something that was digestible to the average moviegoer? The answer to this question would be the big swing that would ultimately doom the franchise to failure. If you listen to me, everything is going to make sense. Then you need to trust me. After multiple rounds of development, it was finally Macbeth director Justin Kurzel's involvement that pushed the film into green light territory. The story would follow Callum Lynch, a new character not appearing in any of the games, who was the great-great descendant of a man named Aguilar, a member of a secretive order known only as the Assassins. At one point in the distant past, the Assassins were in possession of a device known as the Apple of Eden, a piece of technology that can rob anyone of their free will. The film follows Cal as he is captured by a company named Abstergo and conscripted into using a device called the Animus in order to relive memories of his ancestors to discover the true resting place of the Apple. This story, the characters, and the overarching direction of the film franchise is not an adaptation of any of the games directly. Amar Azazia, the head of Assassin's Creed content at Ubisoft, had to issue a public statement to clarify this point. He posted on Twitter, This is a brand new story with new characters set in our universe. Could this be a bold new move? Could this be an interesting development in the way transmedia properties handle adaptations? Possibly. There's only one problem. It was awful. Assassin's Creed, the film, feels like an extended prologue of a video game. A $125 million two-hour prologue. The film opens with Callum Lynch witnessing his mother's death, and then ultimately being blamed for her murder. Thirty years later, he wakes up in a facility run by the previously mentioned Abstergo. He's introduced to a scientist named Sophia Riken, who explains to him that he needs to use the Animus to obtain the Apple of Eden. Aguilar was the last person known to have had it in his possession. We need you to find out where he hid it. After Cal meets multiple other people who are purportedly descendants of assassins, she pitches him the idea of helping her find this piece of technology in order to quell violence and anger across mankind. And here's where everything gets bumpy. Cal, as a protagonist, is less than enthralling. Stay in sync with him or it could be dangerous. And I'm crazy. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that maybe helping the evil corporation that's running the weird genetic assassin prison and trying to find a literal mind control device isn't cool. Why is he helping her? Is he angry at his father? Is he angry about being blamed for the murder of his mother? For being someone who has been imprisoned for 30 years? None of this is really explored in the film. They just gloss over his personal motivations in favor of very expensive set pieces, which basically just amount to the equivalent of Michael Fassbender playing a photorealistic VR game. Nothing works in this movie. The basic rules of the universe are never set up. The entire movie is basically just people watching Cal do a playthrough of an Assassin's Creed level. When creating a story, it's a general truism that the protagonist should make choices that advance the plot, and this will reveal aspects of their personality. 
In Assassin's Creed, the whole film, our protagonist is a henchman for the villains. The film is so poorly structured that it just stops at the two hour mark. There's no massive showdown, no big confrontation. The movie just stops after Cal and his fellow assassins escape from the Abstergo facility. He has a minor conversation with a remorseful Sophia Riken and then wrestles the apple away from the clutches of Professor Riken after killing him and then disappears into the night. It's a clumsy, messy stumble of a film. It feels exactly like what it was, a movie made by a video game studio. And everyone involved knew it. The film was delayed for release multiple times. When the film finally did debut in theaters, it pulled in $10 million the weekend of its release. Today, Assassin's Creed is sitting at a 19% on Rotten Tomatoes. Obviously, this is not the response that Fassbender and the team at Ubisoft were hoping for. When asked about the project during the Alien Covenant press circuit by Movie & Co UK, Fassbender said, I would make it more entertaining. The feeling of the film, I think it, it took itself too seriously. Will we ever see Assassin's Creed 2? No, probably not. The fact that the film franchise chose to not adapt anything from the games was a big mistake, and the idea that films and video games could exist in the same cinematic universe could work, but in this case, it very much didn't. Which begs the question, why? Why was the film's structure so strange? Why was so much focus placed on the present day timeline instead of how the games do it, where we spend more of our time in the past? Was it a production issue that caused these issues or studio interference? It doesn't seem that way. It was the fact that Ubisoft specifically didn't want to eat up too much narrative real estate in the first entry of the franchise. And how crazy is that? They simultaneously killed their main villain and didn't actually have a showdown at all. This film serves as an example of the simple fact that some franchises don't need a cinematic universe tied to them. The film should not have been a new story that doesn't really go anywhere. It should have been a film starring Desmond Miles and his ancestors. It should have done what all great comic book movies do. They take the source material, choose the best aspects of it, and then generate a fully fleshed out singular film. Iron Man 1 is a perfect example. It's a great standalone story that's based on some of the most iconic stories ever created about Tony Stark. Look at the difference between the original Terminator, which was just a single story, and Terminator Dark Fate. Dark Fate had a writer's room behind it and was desperately attempting to launch a new franchise instead of just focusing on telling one good clean narrative. Assassin's Creed never had that chance because it was never an auteur-driven piece. It was never going to be a single film that could tell a story with a beginning, middle, and end. Why? Because having an end scares companies. They want to be able to milk these properties for years to come. You'd think having the video game company involved in the making of the adaptation would be a good thing, but you'd be wrong. Their priorities muddied the waters and forced the film to turn out compromised. From day one, Assassin's Creed was going to be a film made by a video game company. And that's why Assassin's Creed failed. Well, that's all we have for today's episode. What do you think? Will we get a new Assassin's Creed film soon? Or maybe a TV show? Let us know down in the comments below. And as always, please be sure to like and subscribe to Nerdstalgic for more videos just like this one.